about the inability of your fours to score consistently. It, it really looked a lot tonight like there were two bigs against one big. Yeah, it's looked like that all season to me from my vantage point. You know, I, I offensively, I even though that it's been a struggle for us for the majority of the season, I don't think that was our issue tonight. Our, when you allow a, an SEC opponent to come in your building, they're leading scores over there in a boot. Uh, they shoot 51% from the field. They score 80, and they get as many offensive rebounds as you have defensive rebounds. It's a miracle that we were in the game. You know, we made some shots. I thought TD was fantastic in the second half. I'm knocking down shots. Cullen hits a big three to, to give us a chance. We just couldn't come up with the big stop. Uh, it seemed like every time we needed it, and they gave us opportunities. I think they went through a little bit of a stretch where they missed four or five shots, and yet they retained possession of the ball, retained possession of the ball. We can't get the ball. Um, and you need to get the ball to win. Andy, whether it was off the bounce or them getting it inside their bigs, just why, why was such a struggle keeping them away from the basket? They're bigger, faster, stronger, um, obviously up front. I mean, it's just a different level. And so any time that we did anything with switching, and a lot of it was late in the shot clock, was, which is where we'll switch a lot of ball screens, and they just threw over the top. You know, we're sitting there. And the fight has to be earlier. You cannot allow them to touch the ball so close to the rim. You know, Tyler Davis. Uh, is an all-league caliber player, and he goes nine for 11, and every one of them is at point-blank range. We had a chance at 73. We come out in the 1-3-1, in the and we had a trap. They throw the ball out of the trap. Well, obviously, you're going to be outnumbered, and we allow their best player to get a point-blank layup to put them back up. You know, it's a 50-50 ball. We've got to come up and make a play. What did you see on that shot from uh, that close play? Um, uh, I think the one that led to them – like dunking it, I my staff was yelling that they didn't think they got it off in time. I don't know, um, but that's not a reviewable. If if the shot doesn't go in, if the shot would have went in, they could review it. They missed it, and then Davis, I think, on a on a putback, uh, we were screaming that we felt the shot came after the clock. Um, they it's not reviewable. In terms of how the opportunity tonight, how how, how disheartening is that? And then Again, you know, everybody in the room has got a different view on this game and the Baylor game and the next game. Our view has never been nothing than, guys, we gotta, we got to get better. That's what I've been saying from day one. That's what I'm saying now. We're not talking big picture, guys. we we got to get better. We've had to reinvent ourselves. Our guard play has obviously been problematic. We're moving guys around. And then when Dre got hurt, now with the Rashid situation, we're just trying to figure out how to fill, fill holes. And then, you know, with Carlos going down and then losing Nate, you know, we look up up front and we're thin there too. So we're just trying to manage games as best we can and give ourselves a chance to win. We have to change the defenses. We couldn't sit down and, and guard them man to man. They were 17 for 29 against us in man to man. That's the reason I changed defenses. It's not because I'm trying to be coy, I'm trying to win. They were 17 for 29. If we would have played them 40 minutes a man, they'd have scored 150 on us. They just throw it inside and they're bigger, faster, stronger and score over the top. So. I thought uh, our defensive changing cost them some turnovers, allows us to stay around. Again, we shoot the ball much more effectively uh, down the stretch, save for you know a couple of missed opportunities. And, and our margin for error against a team that played as well as Texas A&M. You know, this was a group that preseason was in most everyone's top 20. Uh, they've had their, their issues with personnel as well. Uh, they're a talented team, and, and, and they really played well tonight, made plays. Uh, so our margin for error is such that when we have opportunities, we have to make them as well. You mentioned the other day about Rasheed. You were going to get an update. Yeah, I don't have it yet. The final step, he he, uh, he went and took another test today, which I think is the last hurdle from a physical standpoint. And I have not been informed as to what the results of that were. But he was in the locker room tonight. His spirits were good. So he's obviously had some communications, but I don't know. Uh, I haven't talked to the doctors. You know me, man. I watch basketball. I've seen them a good a, a good bit. Uh, they're an outstanding team. They're they're a legit Final Four contender. Their their front lines a lot like these guys. Um, you know they've got a couple of guys that look like Robert Williams, number forty four, and you guys can see. I mean, especially the guys that follow it and you know hype for draft and what have you. There's a kid that most everyone is projecting that just kind of thrust himself into a first round opportunity. And the reason being is he's just he's so physically gifted. He's he's long. He's athletic. He's strong. It's 15 and 14 tonight, and everything's at point blank range. They got a couple of those guys. They got good guards. Um, I think they've got one loss on the season. They're a quality team. Yeah, with a similar front court coming in, you know, what do you think you guys need to do to combat that better than you did that? Well, we'll game plan, and then we've just got to make more plays. You know, I, I see Eustace and Eustace fights, and he tries, but, you know, he plays 32 minutes and he gets one defensive rebound. KG, 
and plays 19 minutes and gets two defensive rebounds. Uh, we got to rebound the ball. You know, Sevis is leading the SEC in rebounding. He's got to he's got to be a double double guy. We've got to get you know TDs coming off being player of the uh, the week in the league uh, off back to back 11 rebound games, and tonight he had two. You're probably not going to beat Texas A&M.